guys, Josh Cohen back here today again talking about due diligence. Due diligence can be a very extensive process when you're looking to buy a property. Today we'll be talking about potentially buying this house here on the screen. The three basic steps of due diligence are the following. Checking the zoning, checking the site, and checking the building. All these will be done with affiliation to the local jurisdiction. You'll be looking at documentation in your local county or city office. For zoning, the key piece for zoning is determining what can be done with the existing project and does the project even comply with existing zoning ordinances. So for example, zoning is going to define what is the height of the structure supposed to be, what parts of that structure are currently grandfathered in from older, older zoning codes that don't exist today. Um, stuff that's grandfathered in, you may not be able to touch. You may just be able to renovate very lightly. Uh, zoning will also determine how close to a side yard setback can you do an addition. You know, can you do that attach one car garage or is it going to be too close to the side yard to comply with zoning? So zoning affects all those different aspects of the project. Uh, the last piece that zoning affects is something called FAR, uh, floor area ratio. How many square feet can you put on that parcel right there? Uh, zoning is going to be involved in that. The next core ingredient is site. Site starts to look at things, for example, like your soil reports. What kind of soil do you have here? Is it marine clay? Marine clay is one of the worst soils to build on. It's very expensive to put foundations on. Um, zone, uh, site will also look at things like stormwater management, tree preservation. Um, if you're in like a floodplain, that's so something else that would be in, in, important for you. The floodplain, for example, will be very costly to build on, or there could be a lot of restrictions to build there. Um, they might let you do you know, a very specific thing, but not everything you were thinking of. The other last piece of site is something called RPA, residential protected areas. Many jurisdictions have these. Site can indicate whether or not you have very limited building uses on that property. The last core piece we'll be talking about today is building. When you look at building, you really want to examine, you know, you're trying to take a project from A to point B, and everybody has a different B where they want to end up. To get to B, you really want to know what you're starting out with. That's so key and so many folks miss that. So when you're looking at the existing structure, make sure that you carefully define everything you have on that property. So here we are, we're looking at a house. The first thing that we notice is the front yard sort of rolls downhill and the backyard rolls uphill. The first thing I'd be looking at from a building perspective is how does the, the water get drained around that property? Does it slope through the side yards or does the house just back up all the water in the back of the yard and it somehow ends up in the basement? So these are sort of the existing building conditions we're working with. The next thing I'd be looking at is this house, let's say for example, is that classic 1950s home. It's brick on block. So you have block all the way down to the basement and you have a brick facade on the outside. What happens with projects like these? It, it becomes very expensive to move window and door openings on a, pro, on a house like that one. So if you're designing something new around this existing house, you don't want to be moving too many windows and doors. That's going to get very costly for you. So first thing we're doing is marking all the existing door and, op and window openings. Second thing is we're checking what the foundation looks like. In order to check what the foundation looks like, to see what it can support for future use, you have to dig down and measure what's called the footer height and depths, widths. The size of the existing footers will determine what you can build in the, in the future on this property. The other things that you'll be looking at in depth are what are the existing, a lot of these older houses have a steel beam running through the, high, the headroom of the basement. That steel beam is obviously a structural element You'll want to know what the size of that steel beam is, what the span of it is, how it's supported. Let's say it has two lolly columns with pure footers under them. You'll want to know how those lolly columns are placed, what the sizes are, and what the sizes of those pure footers are as well. All the structural elements of that existing home are things that you want to know. Um, the more that you change, the more cost you're into. The other thing I would highlight to you is you want to know where do the existing utility connections come in. Does the gas, you know, currently have a meter here? 
and it's coming in through the ground that way is your electric overhead over here. You want to know where all these utility connections come in because again, moving these things around is going to cost you a lot more money. Um, the last piece will be, you know, sewer and water. Is the sewer coming in above the height of your basement slab, meaning you'll need like an ejector pump, or is it coming in below the basement slab and going out to the street right here, uh, as well as the water line. What kind of water line is it? Is it a copper line that lasts 50 years? So you really want to pick apart everything in this existing structure before you go to the next step, which is planning your future project. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.